easy to cook, filling, delicious, and one of the most consumed food crops on earth? You guys already know what we're talking about, right? Rice. People eat it every day, but how much do they know about it? It's domestication, history, cultivation, the entire process it goes through before it's cooked and served in front of billions of people all over the world. We're gonna talk about this and so much more in today's video. So without further ado, let's get started. Raw Materials One of the best and most convenient things about the rice crop is that you don't need a lot of raw ingredients to achieve your goal. All you need is rice seeds or seedlings, but it's not as easy as it seems. Choosing the right kind of rice seeds is also extremely important. Factors like the climate, area, temperature, and moisture, etc. play an insanely important role in the proper growth and harvest of rice plants. So before you choose a certain kind of rice seed, make sure they're tough enough to adapt to local conditions, can tolerate soil issues and drought, and are good quality and high yielding. We all know and are probably tired of hearing the expression, you reap what you sow. Well, in this case, it can be true, quite literally. The quality of your rice crop depends on the type of seeds you're using. Another important thing that you must keep in mind is what purpose are you planning to use the rice for? For example, in the United States, long grain rice is usually used for stuff like boiling or to prepare meals that are very quick to cook and can be consumed while being on the go and of course, soup. On the other hand, if you want your rice to be used in cereals, baby foods and beers or liquors, the best choice for you is to go for short grain rice. Now that we're done talking about the history, domestication, and initial steps of harvesting rice, let's take a look at the manufacturing procedure. Preparation Yep, you spent time doing research and looking for the right type of seeds, but what's the point if you're not preparing your soil first? That's right, folks. Soil manipulation is one of the most important steps in the preparation phase of sowing rice seeds. If it's hilly terrain, you have to level the area into terraces. However, in the United States, rice seeds are usually planted in river deltas. But in both cases, you have to plow the fields with a disc plow, an offset disc plow or a chisel before planting the seeds. Planting the rice correctly isn't the only thing needed for a healthy and good crop. You have to make sure the irrigation is equal and an unnecessary amount of water isn't being directed towards one particular part of the entire field. For this purpose, you can use pumps, reservoirs, ditches, and streams. Now, let's move on to step two, planting. The main step of growing a healthy rice crop, planting, is carried out differently in different regions. For example, in developed countries where farmers can afford the relevant machinery and the fuel required by them, seeds are sown with the help of machines. However, in less developed and third world countries, rice is sown by hand. That's right, folks. In some parts of the world, people still do it the old fashioned way. And boy, does it take time and effort. But remember, it doesn't matter if you're planting your rice by hand or with the help of a machine. What does matter is that you're supposed to soak the seeds fully before you plant them. So after you've soaked and planted them, let them grow for at least 30 to 50 days. After that, the seedlings are transferred in bunches to the flooded paddies. In developed countries, a machine called a drill is used that directly places the seeds in the soil. And if you think this is convenient and over the top, wait until you find out that in America, rice is sometimes sown by airplane. However, these planes don't fly at a high altitude like the regular ones and distribute around 101 to 111 per hectare. To put it simply, they sow around 15 to 30 seeds per square foot. Now, moving on to the next step, harvesting. Bet you saw this one coming, didn't you? But there are several questions that you need answers to before you harvest your rice crop. Like, how long does it take for them to get ready for harvest? What are the signs of a prepared rice crop? Well, after at least three months, when the tops start to droop, the stem becomes yellow and the grains begin to ripen. That is your sign to start harvesting your rice crop. 
Another important thing to keep in mind is that the more water drains from the fields, the more ripe the grains are, and that means the more they need to be harvested. And just like sowing, harvesting can be done in two ways as well. In developed countries, machines are used. However, in third world countries or regions where people prefer to harvest traditionally, everything is done by hand. For that, extremely sharp knives or sickles are used as it is a very old and traditional Asian practice. Drying and hulling. After they've been harvested, the rice is allowed to dry up. That can be done either naturally or artificially. In the majority of cases, the rice is spread out in the sun for some time until they're dry. After they've dried up nicely, they're called rough rice and they're prepared for hulling. In simpler words, hulling means that the dry rice is rolled between stones or processed through a mill. Whatever method you choose for hulling your rice, make sure to get rid of the debris and clean the rice by passing it through a sift multiple times. Some people prefer to flail the rice by hand after harvesting, but in developed countries, it's done with the help of a machine called the mechanized thresher. After that, a shelling machine removes the hulls from the rice and both of them are taken to the patty machine where the hulls are shaken to one side and the rice is moved to the other one. The hulled brown rice is then moved through two more machines that basically rub the bran layer off and remove the oil present in the grain as it might cause it to spoil quicker. After that, cooling and polishing take place. Sometimes, to improve the appearance and increase market value, a layer of glucose is used to coat every grain. Enriching After hulling, a lot of the essential vitamins and minerals are lost, so to add them back to every individual grain, the rice is either steeped under pressure to transfer the essential nutrients from the bran layers to the kernel itself, or the rice kernels are soaked in a bath of essential nutrients. Speaking of nutrients in rice, did you know that US grown rice is naturally gluten free? Not only that, but they're known to be the least harmful for people with several allergies. On top of that, they're extremely suitable for people with heart diseases or high blood pressure as they contain surprisingly low levels of sodium and cholesterol. A single serving of US grown rice contains about 15 vitamins and minerals needed by the body to function optimally. So after the enrichment process, the rice is dried and is called converted rice. Don't worry though, the removed bran and oil also come in handy. That's right folks, remember the saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure? Well, in this case, the removed oil is used in livestock feed and the straw is used for livestock bedding. Not only that, but the removed hulls are used to prepare mulch. And for those who don't know, mulch is a great way to recondition your soil before sowing your next crop again. Using technology for your ease is a great thing, but traditional practices have proved to be just as good and quite logical. You can achieve the same goal by using either way though. For example, traditionally, farmers rotate crops during consecutive years as it ensures a large yield. But scientifically, modified seed varieties can help us achieve the same goal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the staple food of every one out of three people is prepared. Organizations like the IRRI, WARDA, and CIAT are researching the production of new and modified rice varieties that requires less water and less organic fertilizer, as it is a big contributor to the greenhouse effect and has more resistance towards diseases and pests. Water requirement is another big issue faced by small farmers in the process of cultivation of rice. To grow only a kilogram of rice, you need almost 5,000 liters of water. If not properly backed up or facing a drought, the whole crop can be destroyed. Click on one of the two videos on your screen right now. We'll catch you guys in the next one.